Good evening. Thanks for joining us this evening at St Andrew's Haunton Scan for our night prayer. We'll be using the Worship at Home booklet and you can print a copy from the web address that's showing. And the Bible passages that we'll be reading this evening are from 2 Kings, chapter 17, Psalm 60 and Matthew chapter 7. And we begin, as we always do, with those comforting, comforting words from Deuteronomy, chapter 33. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Join in with me with anything at all you fancy. Nobody else will hear you apart from the other people in the room, so you can say... Join in with anything and everything. Our opening sentence. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So we'll spend a moment just reflecting on what's happened during the day. Our successes, our failures everything we've done or haven't done, who we've spoken to. And let's think about all the good things and just still our minds now from the busyness of the day as we relax into the evening. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and God us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. So we have three readings, as usual. The first one from the Old Testament is from the second book of Kings, chapter 17. And we're going to flit about a bit through this chapter. We're going to read verses 5 to 8. 13 to 15, and then 18. So 2 Kings, chapter seven, chapter 17, uh, starting at verse 5. The king of Assyria invaded the entire land, marched against Samaria, and laid siege to it for three years. In the ninth year of Hashir, the king of Assyria captured Samaria, and deported the Israelites to Assyria. He settled them in Hala, in Gozan, on the river Haber, and in the town of the Medes. Israel was exiled because of sin, moving to verse seven. All this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God, who brought them up out of Egypt from under the power of Pharaoh king of Egypt. They worshipped other gods and followed the practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before them, as well as the practices that the kings of Israel had introduced. The Lord warned Israel and Judah through all his prophets and seers, turn from your evil ways, observe my commands and decrees, in accordance with the entire law that I've commanded your ancestors to obey and that I delivered to you through my servants, the prophets. But they wouldn't listen and were as stiff-necked as their ancestors who didn't trust in the Lord their God. They rejected his decrees and the covenant he made with their ancestors and the statutes he'd warned them to keep. They followed worthless idols and themselves became worthless. They imitated the nations around them, although the Lord had ordered them, do not do as they do. So the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his presence. Only the tribe of Judah was left. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
And we move on to our psalm. The psalm this evening is Psalm 60. And again, it's bits and bobs here and there. So we're reading verses 1 to 5, and then we're moving on to verse 11. So Psalm 60. You have rejected us, God, and burst upon us. You've been angry. Now restore us. You've shaken the land and torn it open. Mend its fractures for its quaking. You've shown your people desperate times. You've given us wine that made us stagger. But for those who fear you, you have raised a banner to be unfurled against the bow. Save us and help us with your right hand, that those you love may be delivered. Give us aid against the enemy, for human health is worthless. With God we shall gain the victory, and he will trample down our enemies. And we say together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our New Testament reading is from Matthew chapter 7, reading verses 1 to 5. It's about judging others. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way as you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eyes and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you want to fit in with those around you, those you work with, the rest of your family? It can be uncomfortable to stick out like a sore thumb and often it's easier to go along with what your friends, workmates or family do or say. It's also very easy to be critical of others. I'm as guilty as the next person in that respect, perhaps more so. How easy it is to see somebody else's faults, but be oblivious to your own. In our reading from Two Kings, we heard how the Israelites had turned away from God and started worshipping the local gods. They'd started doing what the locals were doing, it seemed to have slipped their memory that God had led the nation out of slavery in Egypt. Even when God was trying to help them, to bring them back to himself by sending prophets to warn the people of the impending doom that they were heading for, they didn't listen. Instead, they followed worthless idols and themselves became worthless. They imitated the nations around them, although the Lord had ordered them, do not do as they do. They wanted to fit in with the locals, so in the end, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed his presence from them. Only the tribe of Judah left, who presumably had listened to God and continued to worship the one true God. You know, it sometimes takes a dramatic event to bring people to their senses. For example, look at the psalm we've just read, Psalm... What, what psalm was it? Was it Psalm 60, wasn't it? Yeah, Psalms, Psalm 60. We read, you rejected us, God. You've been angry. We've had desperate times. But in the end, verse 11, they recognised that human help is worthless. 
and they knew that with God we shall gain the victory. I find it interesting that the word worthless comes up in both of these passages. From the king's reading, they followed worthless idols and themselves became worthless. From the Psalms, the realisation that human health was worthless in the face of what was happening, only God could help. How many times have we failed God in what we say, in what we do, and in how we behave, and in what we think? How many times? He's always there for us, watching and waiting for us to realise our errors. Listen for the guidance he gives us, whether that be from what we read, from answered prayer, from a spoken word. So if necessary, let's stand out like a sore thumb and let's live a life worthy of him. Amen. We come to our time of prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, you speak to us in all kinds of ways, through all kinds of people. Forgive us that we're sometimes close to what you have to say to us. Forgive us that we avoid things that challenge or unsettle us, preferring to criticise. Forgive us that we find fault with others that we don't agree with rather than listening to their point of view. Forgive us that we can become so sure of our own convictions and so set in our ways that we miss what you're telling us. Open our hearts and minds to you and help us to live a life worthy of you. Amen. And the prayer for the second week after Trinity, which would be found in this week's little net extra. Lord, you've taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray for those who are on our prayer list. Please add any others that you would like to uh, pray for. We pray for John, Iris, Carol, Sharon, Karen, Susan, Geoffrey, Sophia, John and Pamela, Tony and Diane, Jane, Carol, Paul, Catherine, Anne, Rachel, Colin, Callie. May they each know your love and so feel comforted. Amen. We'll have a short time of silence where you can bring your own prayers to God. Maybe it's an opportunity to re reassess your relationship with God and an opportunity to ask for his guidance in all you do. And join in with me in the following prayers that you'll find in the booklet. Merciful God, 
we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain or in distress of any kind knowing that whenever danger threatens your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength through jesus christ our lord amen be present O merciful god and protect us through the silent hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness through jesus christ our lord amen i see there's a request to pray for mike joe and family we bring them in our thoughts to god too Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessings be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And interestingly, the Lord's Prayer is the topic for our Sunday services. We started, is today Monday? Yeah, we started yesterday with the first uh, line, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So if you keep an eye out an eye out for the following Sundays, you'll see the rest, looking at the rest of the Lord's Prayer and how it can help us. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And together we say, the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. Thanks for joining us for this uh, night prayer from St Andrews, Horton the Skern. And you can join us again for morning prayer, nine o'clock in the morning tomorrow, and another night prayer, seven o'clock tonight, tomorrow night. Good night. God bless. <laughs>